Hello, good morning, welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. Out on a, a very, very chilly morning on the boat. We're not down in Cornwall today, we're up in the north of Scotland. And I don't need to tell you, it is absolutely bitter. <laughs> yeah, the sun's just come up and the air temperature is a balmy minus three degrees. We're gonna try and find somewhere to put the anchor down and we're gonna do a day's fishing. Fine morning though. Let's go and get a hook set. It is deep. Give that a minute to settle, start prepping these baits and rigs up. Maybe a little box of tricks out. Sliding ledger rigs. Big ones. Very big ones. In fact what I'll do, to save my fingers, I'll knock one of the rigs up and then I'll show you. Yeah, there's quite a lot of birds working over there, back at that island. Today is going to be a big rigs, big baits for big fish type of day, hopefully. Give you some type of example. That is one bait. A full flapper, half an octopus and a kebab, mounted on a 14 hook. Now I have crushed the barb on it. We are we are fishing it in a bit of tide, so we have some big leads as well. Just going to gradually drop that down to the seabed and let it sit. And hopefully the scent will carry it away down into the deeper water, even deeper than what we're already in. And we'll see a fish. these rigs and to see if we can find out if there's anything else down there. there could be any number of, of deep water species but um, ideally I'm hoping for a black mouth dogfish. Catch normal dogfish and that's just fine because I'll, I'll reuse a dogfish as bait for a skate. Yeah we're expecting uh, Spur dogs and hopefully black mouth dogfish. How long was that take? A minute. I was literally saying, I was like, the battery's on 10%, I better change it. As soon as I looked up, the rod was going do, 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 do. What I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna hold it now while Chris brings the lighter rods in, just so they don't get wrapped around me. That just shows you there, that, <laughs> that, that should be a lesson, not only to myself, but to everybody else. While I went and changed the battery, I said, hey Chris, hold on to this rod. Put my harness on, change the battery over. I'm fishing with a barbless hook. It's just popped off now, just when I've taken the rod back. So that was frustrating. So we've had a, what our first bite, we've had our first bit of interest. Very long. Bring this up, rebate and drop back down again. It's 
just, just nodding. Yeah, all I did before is that fish that dropped off, because I had such a big bait on, I thought, there's maybe a chance. If there's still enough bait left down there, I'll drop it straight back down. That goes, it. It's just, and I'm waiting for it to give it like a committed bite, because it's such a big bait and a big hook. There we go. a little fish it shows that I've still got bait there because I'm still getting bites but that was a little fish there I felt that as I lifted up to it I lifted the whole weight of the fish off the bottom could be a could be a thornback ray could be a big thornback could be a small skate could be yeah still there again Get another bait knocked up. We'll give this five more minutes. If it hasn't committed, we'll swap the baits over. But yeah, it's, at this this early stage, it's just all about getting a scent trail going. That's why we're putting these real big baits down to start with. When the fish come on the feed and they start below, us, you can start sending smaller baits down. Chris has managed to find a fish there while well, he waited for a committal bite, wound down and lifted into it. Tell you what, hand it to me for 10 seconds and I'll knock it off for you. Yeah. Oh yes. Getting them fish on the feed. Now <laughs> we might have some fun here if we both look into a decent fish at the same time. Because down on the seabed, you don't know where they're going to swim. We'll just have to deal with it as it happens. There we go. Unfortunately, there's not going to be an awful lot to see here because it's just going to be me and Chris bent into fish. When you see, when you see these fish, you will realise how they use their shape. They're just massive and flat, and all they're doing is suctioning to the seabed, sucking on like a sucker cup, and holding there. And all you've got to do is you've got to load the rod up and use the bend in the rod to tire the fish out and lift it off the bottom. Once you start it moving in the water column, they can kite around a bit. All I'm doing here, other than giving Chris loads of encouragement, is because he hooked into his first and he started playing his first, I'll hold man under tension on the bottom and let him try and deal with his. If we try and fight both of them up in the water at the same time on this small boat, we're into trouble. Fish on this is Yeah, you concentrate on your island. On the drive up, all the way up yesterday, for like, how long did it take us? 12 and a half hours? 12 and a half hours, yeah. 12 and a half hours all the way up yesterday, driving up through the middle of the night, through snowstorms and sleet and traffic and minus, down to minus six, we were kind of just thinking about, this is what makes it worthwhile. <laughs> going, 
We had like two hours sleep last night. Yeah. Definitely worth it for this. There she is. Oh, I'll tell you what, it's not a bad fish. Nice fish, is it? Get up, lass. Going to, to turn it down in it. Take another wrapper on the left hand. This one's just sat it tied. It's just sat with its wings out. Properly stuck into the seabed, like I had to kind of tempt it out, and then once it, it just kited about for a bit. Now it's sat out all the time. But my reel is completely mashed out. I'm having to hold line on the spool with my thumb. Do without these, we do without these nine layers of clothes now. <laughs> You've not got this up yet. Huh? You've not got this up yet. No, I was busy waiting on you messing around. There it comes. There's a bow wave off it. There you are, mate. Come on. It's not a small one. Like. See if it come up and it was a thorn back rear back to front, I would say I'm not having it. Going back home. A trace. That split ring must have come off. In two seconds. Right. Yeah, because that fish was a little bit smaller than Chris's, I managed to lift that one aboard quite easily. You can tell this fish is a male, because of these claspers here, it's actually gone. Was, there was a bit of bait left, so by by making and packing a big bait, I'd missed a couple of bites there, and yet I'd still managed to pick the fish up. And because I'd crushed the barbs on the hook, it was just just, just real simple to just pop them out. So we'll, that fish was what was it across? 50? 56 wide by 71 long. I don't know what that is conversion yet. We haven't worked it out. Yeah, uh, big fish. Get these baits knocked up and sent back because if the fish are on the feed, we're going to catch some more in. There you go. And there's your lead.
what I'll do is when we get these baits to the bottom, I'll show you a baiting up demo and I'll talk you through the rig. You are... Uh, you're halfway down, I'll start dropping down. To drop it down under control, because you've got probably five pound of lead, we've got a decent run of tide. All I've done is I've backed the drag off so that the line is running out not free spool, but the weight of the lead is more than the drag on the reel, so it just runs out like that. At the moment, the tide runs in those directions, that way and that way, and the wind's coming from that way, so we have exactly wind across tide. The wind across, you just, as soon as you come to slack water, you just go like that. Get these baits from the bottom, tidy the deck up, Square ourselves away. Really quickly talking to you about the hook length that we've got. That is a 14 0 with the barb crushed. And I've got three or four feet. Now this is this is 200 pound fluoro. The only reason why I've used this is because it was a leader that got sharked up and I couldn't use it for what I wanted. 200 pound mono, 300 pound mono, anything like that's good. And one of the other ones that I've got down now is 300 pound mono. And I did stick a booby rattle and a little bit of bling on there. But yeah, all we did for the bait was we chunked a couple of pieces of mackerel so they went on like kebabs. Take the head off that floor. And just threaded them right up past the eye of the hook. So they're, they're on the trace. Now as the tide's quite strong, this it won't let them float up, they will get pushed down to the base anyway. And then all I did was I took one of the big mackerel that we brought up from Cornwall, took the tail off, and just laced it through so that the hook was kind of in the body, poking out like that. And then one of our octopus, because of the size of it, if I'd had any of the small ones, I would have used a whole octopus. Because the octopus that we have are quite large. Because the octopus that we have are quite large. Is it a fish or is yeah, it a snag? I think so. I don't know. I'll be real quick. I'll let it have a bit long. That's the base of the bait. There, yeah, like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of our octopus, cut it in half, mount it on there, and then lash the rest of it on the bit elastic. I'll show you right. Well these are these are big ones. Could probably get away with making three baits out of this. All I'm gonna do is take off take off three of the tentacles actually. There's a big one. fingers I'm trying not to stick a grip big hook in them. Now I'll take my bit elastic when I can find it and all I'm doing is I'm just holding holding the octopus to the mackerel. So there's there's your bait. You can see there look I've got something to flutter in the tide. I've got a main mass of bait that's going to let a lot of scent out. I've got a very proud hook point and then what I've done with the last couple is skate, they don't mind eating dogfish, they're one of the only things that will eat the dogfish. Almost as a bit of like divine retribution is with the dogfish that we've caught, we're going to be reusing it as bait. So this little fillet is incredibly tough and strong. So to stop any of this bait being pulled off the hook, I've been putting a little tiny strip of dogfish on there. Because this is a barbless hook, I don't want anything to come off. So this little bit of dogfish, hopefully, is going to stop anything getting pulled off. That is like a jumbo skate bait. Well, I wouldn't want to eat, well, I wouldn't want to eat that, but I can't imagine. Funnily enough, I aren't very cold anymore, are you? <laughs> yeah, I warmed up a bit now, actually. Yeah. I've warmed up. Yeah. It's amazing how a bit of fish action will perk you up a bit, isn't it? 
hopefully when this tide finishes swinging round and we get set again we'll, we'll start knocking a couple of fish out Whoa. sun never comes up very high here though does it Yeah, yeah. yeah, just like a massive thorn back right yeah. here. What is? In the area where we are, I mean, we, these are like the top predator. Mm. I don't think they're scoting about just on the bottom. I think they're cutting them like six, eight foot off the bottom. And if they're seeing anything, they're dropping on it. That mark just off the bottom is the skate that I'm playing. Because there's a prohibition on landing these skates, this is one of those fish ones. So what she didn't like that little bit extra stick I was giving her. Because there's a prohibition on landing skates. This is one of those fish where you, you stand a chance of catching one of them above, above the record. The record's been broken quite a few times. But it can't be claimed because you can't land the fish. We just settled, haven't we? Just, just finally sat somewhere. The tide had swung us all the way around and we just got sat back. Been there minutes. So they mustn't like too much of a moving bait. We've probably been following it, mm. and waiting for it to stop. It's not very interesting for you, is it? Sorry. <laughs> Trying to give a little bit of commentary, but it's just being methodical, keeping a bendit rod, rod back to fish. Just like a dinosaur. He's 
had it hooking in before, look. Fantastic fish, look at the size of my eyes. But these males, they have strong thorns on the sides of the wings, which they grab hold of females when they're mating. There are a load of little lice on there, and another one of these saltwater leeches. Look, try and remove these because not only did they feed on them, but that cut there is an open source for um, bacteria to get in and cause an infection. Because all of these scars here are from them leeches. But yeah, look at the look at the size of his conkers. These are big lads. <laughs> Pardon you. you. Just lift its nose up a second. I'm just gonna. Right, look. If I could get you to hold this, there's that dogfish fillet. The toughest bit that was holding the bait on. Is that dogfish fillet there? Come on up, up. Pardon you. Don't put your fingers anywhere near there. He's had two hooks in him before. Let go. Really quickly get a measure and we'll slip this guy back. Ooh, go on, lads. Before you try and. You tried macing me a couple of times with that tail. See how he's kind of arched up. I tell you, it's full of aggression. One, two. Still not as big as yours. No. <laughs> Just going to drop this bait down here, and you can see how it's going to sit in the tide like that, can't you? One of them tentacles out. Like what wouldn't want to eat that? This is the bait that I've just taken out with that fish. And it was the little dogfish slither right on the end. Kind of held these little chunks still on the hook. So yeah, do recommend that. Yeah, all we've done is we've crushed off these barbs so it, if you do accidentally snap off in a fish or like lose your rig in a fish for whatever reason you could have breaking your line or sometimes a fish can wrap up and it's, it's spiky tail can touch the braid or anything like that a barbless hook will come out that you are, if you do lose a rig in a fish a barbless hook will come out now the tide swung us completely at slack water all the way right across and we're now sap good again I've just had that fish maybe five minutes after we'd stopped swinging We've got two fresh baits down. I reckon we've got probably about an hour and a half left of good daylight. We'll give this 45 minutes. Give it about 45 minutes and then we have to up anchor and go. But it might not even take that long. I think I'll finish the crisp though. Oh, that looks like it's great to me. <laughs> Good man. Can't go any further, can it? It's already on the seat. Twing, twing. Just to dispel the myth about bananas. Yeah, we've had these on the boat all day. Maybe with that one. Yeah. I'll 
draw the line of feeding another mana banana. <laughs> oh, you making hard work of this one? Well, you made the wheels look pretty hard work, so I've got to build suspense. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was positive that last one was, was a bigger fish. The first meal I had to the second one fought completely different. Like the smaller ones ran off down tight. That second one played it like Chris's and just stayed under the boat. Kept dogging to be down. Easy. I'll just do all the hard fighting one shot. Yeah. As Chris was saying here, is that a 50 stand-up? Yeah. He's got a 50 wide reel and a 50 stand-up. Whereas man's a 30 wide and a 30 stand-up. So he has got a little bit extra capacity and extra drag. Which is maybe helping him out in the situation. I'm not milking it as well. you don't put your fingers anywhere near because that mouth protrudes by like an extra eight to ten inches um, although it's confused those aren't its eyes underneath although they look a little bit like it those are its eyes there he's got a lot of like well yeah these are these are those leech scars poor fella let's get a measure on him real quick and shot him back right that was 74 inches long. What did we say it was? 56. 15. 56 inches wide. And what I'm looking for is that camera. Wicked. I'll take two minutes now while we're baiting up to be able to talk you about like the top end of the rig. Onto your main line, you've got main line braid and then we've got a leader. And check that, we've just got a really strong swivel. Now our traces, they're like a souped up bolt rig. We have got five, about 10, 10 to 11 foot of 300 pound mono. On each end of that, I have just crimped a Flemish eye with a strong swivel. Now the reason that I have a split ring on the bottom is because this is your sliding ledger. We've got six pound leads, well this is a six pound, I've got a five pound. It's just a massive sliding ledger rig, because these are just massive rays. And the reason why the split ring is there is so that it doesn't slide all the way past. Now the reason why we've got it in a bolt rig is because when you're dropping the bait down, that could slide all the way up. And if it goes up onto your leader, you don't, you're never going to be in contact with your bait. So I know, no matter how much that slides up, that this lead is never going to be longer than the hook length and this 11 foot. Also, the reason why this is stronger, those skate have got really sharp thorns on their tails. And if it catches onto the mono, I mean, these have already these were, these were brand new this morning, weren't they? And they're already chaffed up where they've been rubbing against their tail and their skin and their teeth. Yeah, sure, mate. I'll get that joint to carry on. Is it going, is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Saying that, that bite that you were getting from that one there was like a... Just, yeah, a little rock like rock. A, a I thought it was a spur dog, dog, to be honest. Yeah, more of a very similar to John's, but I haven't got the cocktail on, I don't think. The point now is definitely getting a few bites. So 
well, that's it. Ways. We've got you don't really. Feed. I just got a bit of octopus to put the end and a whole map of waste, That was it, like I was saying, once you've, once you've got them into an area, once you've got them on the feed, you can put down smaller baits because they're already in that area, they're already in the vicinity looking for food. The first few baits that you send down when you get to an area, like when we'd swung round at anchor, when we got set to this new spot, we hammered it with the big baits again to get a maximum amount of scent down there. These fish that we've been catching today, they skate. We get quite a lot of species of skate in the UK. In fact, most of the fish, most of the rays that people that people have in the UK, like thornback ray or uh, blonde ray, small-eyed ray, all of that, they're actually skates. And the differentiation between a ray and a skate being that a ray gives birth to live young, and a skate lays a purse. These common skate, flapper skate, are the largest. They get to about 250 pound maximum. All of the other species, like thornback skate, um, blonde skate, small-eyed skate, undulate skate, yeah, they are all maxing out 30 pound. There are a couple of other species that, that are found in here occasionally, but they aren't a very common capture at all. That's a white skate and a blue skate. We actually we caught quite a few white skate, also called a clear nose skate or a bottle nose skate. We caught quite a few of those from the shore in Fort Ventura. I'll tag a picture in here to show you what they look like. We've never had a blue skate yet. Yet to catch one of those. I tell you what though, I'm looking forward to a shower and some sleep. Yeah, nice chill. We'll have a look for somewhere to go for a steak. The temperature today was supposed to reach a high of zero. That wind chill's not too bad. That wind chill this morning was bitter. <laughs> well, that, it was sorting that anchor rope, and as soon as I picked it up, and it was wet and it was all like rock hard. I put them gloves on, I thought this didn't help me at all. Being able to play the fish with these harnesses that we've got on, these. Not only is it safer for our backs, but also it's, it's fish carry. It doesn't prolong the fight. It allows you to put more pressure onto the fish to get into the boat quicker. Because these, these big skates, the area that we're fishing on is mud. If they got a chance to stick down into the mud and you only had like a 12-20, a lighter rod and a lighter reel, you'd be pulling and pulling and pulling at it and you'd be fighting that fish for hours. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't be the fact that you'd be fighting the fish, fighting its strength. It just suction cups itself to mud, so it like grease locks itself down there. Now this one, this one isn't in the mud at the minute because you can see because it's still well nodding. There we go. <sighs> I didn't get that much light on it. It might be like right down. I reckon it's like a couple of feet off the seabed. You can, you can sense it, which is why it's going for it. 
This is where I've been, where Chris's rod is, is 50. We'll have a little bit more strength in it to be able to pull the fish out. Because like I say, all you do is you just load up the rod. The bend in the rod fights the fish. As I'm bending the rod, that's constantly putting pressure on the fish and the fish is having to expend energy to fight it. So they're obviously down there. I wonder if it is little ones being pecking at it. And now the skate have come in, the little ones have scarpered and the skate have found the baits. Because we're getting like a lot of really erratic pecking bites, like spur dogs. And then it stopped and I was just saying, I said, I think I must have no bait left because the bites have completely stopped. Speculation of what it probably was was that spur dogs were, were chewing at the baits because I put such a, such a big tough bait down there that half an octopus and them two mackerel. When the skates come and scared the spur dogs off, there's still been some bait left for it. A little bit of skill and a lot of luck landed this fish. This fish is almost too big to give perspective to. No, we've just, just lifted her out of the water really quick to get a proper measure on her. Now a quick photo and we'll just drop it straight back. You grab the other side mate. Come here. A bit. 63 uh. 84 it's just just mammoth right this one actually it's only had one leech on it it's a really good nick, it's got hardly any scars on it, just a couple of little tiny lice. And the hook, the hook was actually just nicked into its skin here. It was amazing I'd managed to land it. I'll just get a really quick photo and we'll just slip it back. She is just mammoth. Just slide her straight back. Like, just look at the thickness of its tail at the, the base, like, can't even get your hand around it. It's an absolute stunner of a fish. There we go. Oh, perfect. Well, I hope you enjoyed joining us. Hope you found it interesting. All the very best. See you later. Ha, ha, ha.